What's up everyone? How's everyone doing today? I hope you guys are all doing well. And today we're gonna be reviewing this 10.1 inch tablet for your car, van, SUV, whatever vehicle you might have. All right, so let's dive right in. Since we have a long video ahead of us, I did include an installation video as well as the features and the guidance of how to use it. So let me first off apologize for that fan noise. It is quite noisy but I do have to keep it on full blast. It is quite hot today, 70 degrees, and I'm under the sun. So I'm sweaty, trying to make this video for you guys. And then I do have to keep all the windows and stuff closed because I have the kids running around playing outside. Let me show you guys what I mean here. There they are, playing with their water guns. So yeah, kids will be kids. There's nothing I can do, but lock myself in the van and being all sweaty for you guys. So if you guys feel sorry for me, do go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't subscribed, and don't forget to smash that like button. Okay, enough chit chat, let's dive right into the tablet and tell you guys all about it. So first off, we have this here, it's the main screen. It is quite dirty, so let me clean that off for you real quick here. So here you have the main menu, main screen. This is uh, what you get when you turn on the vehicle or when you turn on the power button. And here you have your 10.1 inch screen, which is uh, as big as a tablet. And the screen is really nice and bright, pretty uh, smooth and crisp. You have your basic uh, microphone up here, your reset button, you do need a pin to reset it or a toothpick. And then you have your power button, your home button, your back, and volume up, volume down. So basic functions on there. But when you turn on your light, all the buttons will light up white. You have your main screen, which you can customize, and you can do, you can put whatever you want on there. They have a lot of information inside that you can choose from. There's your setting. If you hit that, that will take you to your menu setting, and you can set all of your options. So there's a ton of stuff that you can set. And here I've set up for the weather. So you can have weather, you can have whatever information that you need. It will display your Wi-Fi signal, your Bluetooth. This is your application menu. This will display all of your apps. You do have your Google Play Store inside here. You can download games, download app, which is really nice to have come with a file manager for you to look at your files inside the unit, copy files, copy music in there, or you can take a look at your storage space, your USB flash drive, whatever is on your phone is the same thing here because this is an Android unit. And then over here you have your Bluetooth. This is where you make and receive phone calls, or you can uh, dial phone numbers. You can download all of your contact lists and make calls from that. You also have your history, music streaming. So if you were playing something on your phone, you could actually control it over here and it will stream the music directly into the unit and play on your vehicle's uh, speakers. Next, you have your radio, which is just a basic radio, AM, FM, nothing too crazy. You have your YouTube. You can play YouTubes on here. You can uh, listen to music. You can play videos. You can play it on this screen or you can send it up to this uh, big monitor up here. I'm not going to go into too much details and bore you guys because I know all of you guys know how to use that. Here you have your main small screen, which is a car right now. If you click on it, it will show you a different screen. This is showing your logo. This is showing your date and time. That will show your album arts for your MP3 music. Here you have a compass in case you uh, get lost and you want to know which direction to go. Here you have your Google Maps. So you have Google Maps running and it's giving you directions. This, it will actually pops up on this screen here to tell you where to go. Over here you have your video player. 
which uses your USB thumb drive, flash drive. So if whatever music or video that you put on there, it will find it and it will show you up here. And then of course you have your Google map that shows you directions, notifications, traffic. Here I have iGo set up as my offline navigations, but you can download any offline navigation from the Google Play Store and it will work the same. Just in case you're out and about and you lost your data connections, you can always open this up and it uses uh, GPS and you're good to go you get your direction. So that's your music player. You can play music. It does have a separate backup camera port. So you have three video input ports total. All right, and that concludes all of the features that is built into here. There is quite a bit of uh, stuff that you can customize and play around with. I really recommend you guys get this one. Very cheap and not that expensive. And it has a lot of feature, lots of functions. It's really good. The screen is big. Um, 7 inch screen double ding is fine, but if uh, you can get a 10.1, why not? The only downside to this is uh, on the Ford Transit, the face over here does have an angle to it. So you can't really just directly mount it straight up into there because of the glare issues. So you do have to angle it out a little bit. Uh, on the Mercedes, or on the ProMaster, um, it's just a straight up flat surface so you can mount it pretty easily. But on the Ford Transit, it does have a slight curve to it so you do have to angle mount it. I'll show you guys how to uh, do that right now. Alright, so here's the bracket. Just three pieces of wood going in together. All right, so now we're gonna go spray paint this and make it look good. I'm gonna let that dry for 15, 20 minutes and then we're gonna bring it in and uh, mount it onto the head unit. Using our Dremel tools, make sure you guys cut a big size hole in the back that measure the same width and length of the back of your unit because you have all this cooling air vents back here and you need them to vent during the hot summer times. I'm gonna finish off the job and I'll be back with you guys. Now I'm gonna make a cover for the top in the two sizes out of this material. This is a plastic utility sheeting. This is just a leftover piece from my shower project, my shower wall. pieces. You need some glue to glue it together. So here's the silicone. Let's take that and fill up the gap. And here I have just some uh, double-sided mounting tape. That's what I'm going to use to uh, stick the bracket on. So this mounting tape will hold the bracket onto this securely. That way it doesn't move or go anywhere. just like that. I just got some uh, silicone black. Zip tie 
place right in there that would actually hold a unit in place on the bottom. The top will be screwed in as well as the sides. This would actually cover the bottom. And here's the finished product. Here's the back of the unit. And onto the review. What I think of the unit and does it fulfill all of my needs yes it does it fulfills all of my needs and it's quite a cheap unit i got my unit for i believe it was 60 dollars shipped from china it did take a while to get over here to the u.s um, i think it was right around uh, nine days uh, for it to arrive but it's worth the wait and the price is uh, half of what you would pay for a normal US seller. Uh, warranty wise, since it's only about $60, I didn't really care. Uh, I could replace it if it's broken. Um, I know some of you would like that warranty, um, but since I'm getting mine from China, there is no warranty. And if you're getting it from Amazon or eBay, it's the same exact thing. Um, they have a 30 days warranty, but after that, you're pretty much on your own. You can, uh, if you get lucky, you, have, you get a seller that would respond back to you and help you. Um, but for 60 bucks, and I've been using it for over a year now, and it's working just fine. I don't have any problems. It doesn't overheat or anything like that in direct sunlight. So I'm pretty happy with it. A well spent $60. Um, right now though, the price has changed and the unit is actually $79.99 uh, shipped from China. But if you don't wanna get it from China, you can get it on Amazon or on eBay, which is around $120. Uh, last I checked, I'll uh, give you guys some links below in the description so you can check it out. Don't know what you're doing, watch my videos and look at my installations. That way you get an idea of what's going on and how to install it. Of course, I'm not gonna go into details on what wires is what because each van has different wirings and you just need to follow your diagrams and the instructions uh, booklet that you receive with the unit. You should be good to go. So like I said, the system is amazing. You guys would just have to give it a try and do let me know in the comments how you like it uh, when you get your unit and get it all set up. Just give me a comment and let me know how it goes. Or if you have any questions or concerns, just let me know as well and then I'll answer them. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and kick into the installation video. And now you have your main panels here. This is your vent and also your radio if you have a, just the basic radio. And the same way you take it out is they have clips down here all the way around that you need to take apart. This is where I got the speakers wires from, also the ground and the power wire. It's from the main wiring harness. I left all of these alone because I have a 4.2 inch screens and those all goes into that screen so I didn't wanna touch any of that. And this is the wire looms right here. As you can see all of the wires, I just cut them off and connect them to the correct wires. That just plugs straight into your 
10.1 inch screen. And there's one accessory wires that you need to uh, get from here. Is your uh, ignition turn on accessories, which comes from this uh, plug over here. And on my van is the blue with the red stripe. That's where you get your accessory ignition switch on. If I want to uh, run house power into the media center, I can just turn on that switch and that would power the media center without running power from the vehicle itself. And I have a five-way relay switch. You got your 87A from your house battery, 87, which is your vehicle's uh, battery. 30 will go into the radio unit. The white and the black. The white is actually your accessory wire power. So that would turn on when your ignition switch is on. The black would be your ground. Need two relays. One for the accessories to run the power and one is for the two power connection to go in. So for my setup, I needed two relays because I have two different power source coming in. One is from the battery to power it when the vehicle is on. And when the vehicle is off, the house battery actually powers it. So I need two relays to make that work. And now I'm just gonna tidy up all of this wirings and get it all cleaned up. Fire up on the first try. Really good. Let's turn it off. Test out the power from ignition. There we go. A 4.2 inch factory unit still there still working that's the GPS antenna So I hope that helps you guys get started on your installations or helps you make up your mind on if you want to try out a system or not. If you do, go ahead and check out the links below in the descriptions. And if you like the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe below. Also hit the bell icon to get notified on my next video. And that's it. I guess I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace out.